Hello everyone and welcome to your NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 30th of November 2023. It's Gary. It's Gary again and well that was quite the week (laughs) for our club wasn't it? Our manager has, I was going to say has settled in but he's settling in and has already given us three games unbeaten. Uh, We're in a healthy position I think in the Europa League after the, the first three games and he's already reduced the gap at the top of the table to five points and suddenly things are looking much more positive heading into another, yet another critical week for us in terms of a tricky away game and then a huge semi-final for us to, to march towards some early season silverware. These are the facts but it hasn't really told the story of of the three of the three games. You know, the first one um, against Hibs was was tremendous. It was it was terrific, and then we had a bizarre performance in in Prague, a game of two halves for sure, and then we witnessed what we witnessed yesterday at Ibrox. So it's been quite topsy turvy at the minute, and I guess maybe that's just uh, that goes with the territory. I guess it's just one of these things of having a new management team in place and trying to pick the team up after a very unsettled and unsettled and un- uninspiring start to our season. It's been up and down like a bit of a yo-yo, I have to say. And if nothing else, it's very, very exciting. But oh, I, don't, I don't know. Yesterday was a type and style of, of uh, excitement that I kind of don't need in my life, I think. But let's go on with the game segments. Uh, quite a wee bit to, to cover in both of these games. Uh, first game, of course, was last Thursday's as I mentioned earlier, their game of two halves away to Sparta Prague and, a, and what I think was actually quite an entertaining nil nil draw. Now, I say entertaining, it wasn't entertaining at the time, especially the first half. Um, but yeah, game three of the Europa League and um, when I say entertaining, maybe I could say that I maybe had to try and change my underwear about half a dozen times in the first 50 or 60 minutes as we just got battered silly style all over. Um, all over the the pitch, it felt like you know, particularly in the first half, you know, we we got a bit more of a of a grip on it, and the second, and I think Sparta at one point had something like eleven shots to nil, at one point later in the in the first half there, and, and really took us apart time and again, but the difference this time, of course, was that they didn't actually, we didn't actually lose the goal, they didn't get the goal that they were looking for. We had some. Um, very strategic blocks. We had some incredible Jack Butlin saves and, and some that were just wide or just over uh, the target as well. And uh, at half time in, in one of our group chats, Big Big Scott from Chicago had said, we just got battered nil-nil. <laughs> and he wasn't wrong at all, absolutely. But then Big Philippe worked his magic at half time and, and after a, a wee bit of the same at the, at the beginning of the, the second half, um, we... I thought I thought they honestly ran out of ideas. I thought they had they kind of punched themselves um, out a wee bit, you know, ran out of a bit of steam, ran out of ideas, and because they had basically thrown everything at us, hadn't they? And and we were just we just weren't going away, and that seemed to um, have us say, okay, you're done, aye, okay, right, watch this, and and then we really started to grow into the game and had a couple of fantastic chances, which produced brilliant saves from their goalie, and I, and I thought. We finished the game by far the stronger team and looked the most likely to to win the game at the end there. So, you know, it's always better when you when you end a game like that, you know, and and, and not so much when you start a game like that. But you but you remember the ending a wee bit more than you do the beginning at times. Um, and and you know zero zero is is what it was or nil nil sorry and and uh, and that's what we'll take positives. I think I think we'd all have taken the result before the game and and we most certainly would have taken the result at half time there was a bit of a banter going on uh, from from Alec Grant on the on the WhatsApp chat there about the uh, you, you wouldn't get any money on a draw right now or something like that I can't remember exactly what he said but uh, the way we kept going uh, we just didn't we didn't wilt under the pressure and I think that's a difference with this team rather than I'm I'm certain we would have lost a goal if Michael Beale was still in charge and um, there we just didn't have the the mentality to to see that sort of storm through so we didn't wilt under the pressure and and there weren't actually that many massive howlers um, that, that have kind of pl- plagued us this, this season for sure, the last few seasons really. 
Uh, Jack Butland was, was superb in goal again, and John Souter did what he needed to do, partnering Conor Goldson in central defence. And then I, I thought I'd maybe do a wee shout out here for, for Ben Davies, who, who slotted into an unfamiliar position at left back and after Borna Barisic uh, didn't, didn't make it, uh, didn't make it into the team. Todd Cantwell uh, getting a start was great, and I thought he played his part, as did Danilo when he came on later in the game, of course, forcing a superb save onto the bar. Uh, too and, and giving us just another glimpse from this guy that I think he's this guy's a real deal for us and when he gets fit and when he gets going he's going to be a real handful for every single player and um, that he comes up against every single team that he faces as well negatives yeah the, the way the first half went I thought I thought we were on to a hiding quite honestly you couldn't I couldn't see any way we were going to really come back and really get into the game but you know having right so here's the thing I've played here. I don't play at a good level or anything. I'm not a good football player at all. But having played here consistently over uh, for indoor and outdoor, um, you know, for about 17 or 18 years against teams that we become very familiar with, it's kind of the humdrum of Scotland, uh, you know, honestly, or, or maybe in some of the European teams as well, you play against the same guys a lot. And, and you can just have those games that you think should be competitive or you should be competitive in. But for some reason, you just end up in the end of a doing. And, and we're just old farts and you know who have day jobs and we aren't very fit and the games are at stupid o'clock times and all that sort of thing but then the teams that we're playing are, are, are the same <laughs> as well so I think my argument stands a wee bit unfortunately the usual suspects were producing their usual contribution to the team and of course by that I mean Lammers and Dessers and a little bit of Scott Wright as well Lammers to be fair was very unlucky with the shot that their goalie made a great save off of but that's what happens when you're just out of luck, isn't it? You know, nothing seems to go your way. It was a good enough strike. The goalie made a great save. Time will tell. Quite honestly, whether Philippe is able to get um, get a tune out of them or mould them into the type of players that we need. But thus far, I have to say, I'm, I'm feeling sorry for the guys now. I really am, and it's a tough watch. And and they're they're just having to go through it. You know, in front of fifty thousand fans every every second week, and it's it must be it must be a hell of a time for them as well. And, you know, I mentioned before uh, that, that we don't want to be booing any Rangers players. No one does, but these guys are making it difficult to cheer for them, aren't they? You know, so that's not so great. In terms of the stats, we, we really made a, a good effort to bring the stats kind of back to something a wee bit more normal. And and we had 48% uh, of the possession, which is pretty good. Then we had eight shots on goal with four on target to their six shots on goal and four on target as well. So, I mean, it's pretty even at the end of the day. And I know the stats always don't tell the story, a uh, complete story of, of the game. But, um, it, yeah, it was it was, it was was quite the ending. You know, the, on the referee watch, I thought the ref was... I thought he was really quick, actually, to book our players and pretty slow to, to book theirs. And, and, you know, we had four yellow cards to, to their one, which uh, seemed to... It seemed to me that he was just reacting to the crowd, you know, and every time we were going for a foul, the crowd would go berserk and uh, instead of just kind of actually watching the game and taking each foul for, for what it was. So that was a wee bit annoying. So for that, he's going to get a 6 out of 10. Um, I, I wasn't really overly impressed. So what does that mean? Then it means that we are in third place in the table after three games. So we're at the halfway point right now. Uh, Real Betis are on top with six points. Sparta are on second with four points and a zero goal difference. And we're also on four points with a zero goal difference, but Sparta have scored four goals to our two, so I'm assuming that's why they're ahead of us and goals scored. We need to take this mob at home and then hopefully take care of Limassol, who had a very tight result against Betis there last week. Maybe they're not this garbage separate team that we were all kind of thinking they would be. But we've got two home games here and if we can lock this in before the final game over in Spain, that would be my preference and I'm sure everyone connected with the club's preference as well. Easier said than done, of course, but that's what it would be good and that's what we need to do as well. Our second game was yesterday's 2-1 win at home to Hearts in a game that was just... Absolutely out and out bizarre, wasn't it? It was just incredible, um, how we, uh, how, we <laughs> how the game um, unfolded. I, I have to say, like I honestly showed up expecting us to really, really take it to them, 
and, and you know and make another statement um, under Philippe but man oh man did that, I got that wrong it, it just didn't turn out like that at all the whole team were absolutely off the boil uh, from from the very start and, and we lost a, a terrible goal run about the five minute mark or so and, and that made for a very very long afternoon uh, for us I can't remember the last time oh, well maybe it was under Michael Beale's charge but I can't remember the last time like the entire team took a dip like that like every I mean Jack Butland gets a I guess a wee bit of a pass because you know nothing he could do for the goal and he didn't really do anything else uh, wrong at all after that but the rest of the team whew, I mean I don't know maybe it was the exertions of Prague that took more of a toll on the team than than we anticipated I have I have no idea but it was it was grim it was grim to watch it was grim to experience I have to say and then around about 80 odd minutes roughly something like that certainly towards the, the end of the game in a moment of I don't know what to call it, absolute stupidity or sheer desperation or something like that. I said to the folks in Pinbar, the, where the Rangers Supporters Club of Calgary are, if we score, I'm going to buy everyone a drink because the the bar's open from 9am and the game was kicking off at 9am yesterday. And yeah, talk about incentivising the team with obviously incredible leadership, insight and instincts like, like I, I had. Or I already had a couple of pints by that point and I got a wee bit ahead of myself. Either way, to eke out a result that we did with the two goals in injury time after playing as flat as we did for the entire game is absolutely incredible. I thought it was absolutely brilliant and I hope everyone enjoyed the win at the end. And you know what? You just never know what sort of positive impact this is going to give to the team or be for the team for the season. Overall, I mean, we were in the club. We were already lamenting uh, the fact that we were going to drop points, and it was, uh, you know, they had dropped after that mob had dropped points. Uh, we're just going to give it right back, and psychological, psychologically, I should say that that would have been really, really tough to, to take. But that's just the way that the game seemed to transpire. But now we're in a situation where we've cut the deficit, as I mentioned earlier, to five points, and we we are unbeaten under Clement in his in his first three games as well. So. I can't really, overall, I can't really truly say I've seen a vast improvement in the team. You know, the Hibs game apart, that was that was very good. But we, we did have a tremendous second half in Prague. And then to win the game after 90 minutes of a very uninspiring performance, um, I think is is incredible. And, and we are literally in a better place in the league and in the Europa League as well. And I think that's what's, what's the most important as he continues to, to try and and get himself um, organised with, with the squad, with the team, and an understanding of uh, what they can and can't do in, in terms of what we're trying to do here overall. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things. I think from a from a positive perspective, the I have to talk about James Tavernier here. Uh, you know, I think he hasn't had a great season uh, thus far, and is not absolutely is not the only one and is getting more focused because he's the captain, of course, and then he misses the penalty right at the end of the first half, and and it, it just felt like we were going from bad to worse in the game overall, and then when we get to injury time, we get the penalty, I mean, he would be absolutely forgiven for not taking this particular penalty, but no, he steps up and, and takes it and smashes it right down the centre, and beauty, we get a point out of a game that we didn't, and we didn't look like we we're going to get a point out of it. Nope. We then get the ball out of defence. It goes up to Tav, who plays an absolutely superb cross to Danilo to, to head in the winner. He just created enough space for himself at the back post there to pop it in. And it was absolutely incredible. I ran out into the street. <laughs> the street and, and then I came back in again, forgetting it's winter and it's kind of cold and, and people would be looking at me a bit funny. But an absolutely brilliant result for us. And what a way... To, to end the game and to be fair quite honestly folks we don't do that nearly enough as a team and and we all know what it feels like when that mob from the East End do it time and time again throughout the course of a season so so there you, they get to experience what we get to experience and one minute you're laughing and getting a wee bit excited and then the next minute you're like come on no danger no way and for it to be a penalty and then then the ultimate winner is kind of funny um, as well negatives the game was very 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 poor we didn't play well at all and it was just a real slog I think I think I'll just leave it at that and then see what the result means in the grand scheme of, of the season overall you just never know it felt it felt very poignant to me I have to say um, so we'll, we'll see what that looks like in terms of the stats we had 69% possession uh, we had uh, 19 
I think we had 19 shots overall and five on target. Um, today are four shots overall and one on target. And of course, the one on target for them was their was their goal, which is always seem or always seems to be the case with teams who we play these days. Uh, the referee, what do you think? I, th I think John Beaton did okay. Uh, the penalties were definite penalties, and I don't um, think he. I didn't think he would actually give us the amount of extra time at the end. We were saying it should probably be about 10 minutes and he gave us nine. And then, of course, after we scored the winner in the 93rd, we're like, right, ref, come on, <laughs> you can blow the whistle any time now. But I think overall he did, he did okay. He's had worse games, so I think he'll, he'll get a comfortable seven and a half out of ten for that one, I think. Two games this week. The... Earth, um, the, the first one is away to Dundee in the league, and that's on Wednesday, the 1st of November, and that's a 3.45pm Eastern Standard Time kickoff. It's 7.45 in the UK, but we're an hour less because the, of the clock change uh, there, which will all level itself out this weekend. And Dundee are doing pretty well this this, this season. They're actually in, in fourth position in the table right now, and and they had a, a really credible 2-0 uh, win away at Livingston um, on, on the weekend there, so I don't see this one being an easy game, but, you know, like everything, we, we show up, we do what we're supposed to do, and then we should win the game. And the second one is the big one on Sunday, the 5th of November, and that's at Hamden um, against Hearts, so I'd rather we have a performance and get the game out of sight way before the 93rd or 94th minute Please, Rangers, and that's a 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time kickoff. That's 3 p.m. UK by Sunday. We will be back on even keel with our time difference. And um, yeah, so it's just the one game where we get it just a wee bit, a wee bit later. As I say, this is a semi final. This is a big deal. If we don't take advantage of that mob being knocked out earlier in the, in the competition and win this trophy, I'm going to. I'm gonna jump off something high. I think this would be incredible if we don't if we don't do this. I mean, Hearts gave us Hearts gave us a very tough game on the weekend and kind of played to their strengths and stuff like that. We need to be able to do the exact same on Sunday. Take the game to them, get the game out of sight, and then look forward to a final here next. Well, I guess it would be in December. I was gonna say next month, but we're not quite at the next month part yet. Uh, for RTV, still on my list of things to do is to get is to get back to folks uh, for uh, any questions or, or comments or queries that they've they've raised for us, and and we are in the process right now of organising our first payment for RTV as well as that. So we'll get that organised over the next wee while. On the shout outs for this week, this is well, you know what this is a this is a bit of a heavy one this week. So I'm I'm going to get everything I can out in no particular order here, and then. Uh, hopefully finish off on, on a wee bit of a high but the first one I wanted to do I was going to do this one last week actually I was going to do the first two last week um, but I wanted just to make sure I had permission to do so um, first I didn't want to be insensitive uh, to, to what things were happening but the first one I'd like to pass on our, our um, best wishes and I get well soon note to uh, a good pal of mine Martin Bell um, from down in Chicago his son Lee uh, ended up having a, a brain aneurysm event a couple of weeks back and this is just incredible he was out playing volleyball I believe on a Thursday or Friday night um, with his with his friends or his team or, or whatever it was and then collapsed and then has been in hospital ever since we, we get daily updates uh, from from Martin and and the, the signs are great that you know the the results are coming back he's 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 walking he's talking he's uh, he's he's um, being a bit of the cheeky chappy that he he typically is as well but the real worry is this he's just a young man a very fit young man I don't know if you remember last a year ago in September um, Aaron and I went down to Wisconsin um, via kind of Chicago um, to to their wedding uh, to to Lee and Kayla's wedding. They are and brilliant time. They've just welcomed the first kid, um, into into the world there a couple of months back. So for something like that to happen to someone so young and so fit is just frightening. So I just want to say all the very best, and I hope the recovery continues. And and we are thinking about you every single daily, and and hopefully you get better. On that, on a on a somewhat semi similar note, uh, you'll also probably see for those that are connected with them. Um, or on the NARSA WhatsApp group um, that uh, Billy Fatkin Jr. Um, suffered a heart attack last weekend, not the weekend just past, the weekend before. Um, they put a lovely post on, on Facebook there and, you know, just talking about the actual events that transpired to, to get him to the spot where, you know, he was 
he had to go to the hospital and, and it was confirmed that he did uh, actually have a heart attack himself. He's he's good now. I, be, I believe he's out um, now and uh, is making his appropriate apologies to the various people that he kind of ignored for the weekend and, and got himself uh, to the hospital eventually and thankfully um, nothing more serious happened than that. He's got a, he's got a long road to recovery by all accounts and and for those that know Billy, Billy's a, Billy's a great guy, you know, and, and is instrumental, of course, he's the... Um, he's the president of the Cambridge Club as well, and uh, and as the host, you know, owns the pub for um, that the games are hosted in as well. So very popular guy in in Narsa circles and such. So uh, hope you have a very speedy recovery, Billy, and and um, you're you're up and walking around as quickly as possible after that. And then this one actually surfaced last week I think it was last week yeah I probably could have done this one last week as well I think but I did want to pass on a sincere condolences my on behalf of myself and Narsa of course um to uh, to Helen Bailey and Helen and Jim uh, you know that you, you remember that a couple of years back there Helen lost her, her husband Jim and their daughter Evelyn uh, passed away after a very brave battle with cancer and uh, it, there was a, a heavy presence on Rangers social media channels uh, for Evelyn. She was involved with the, the charity foundation and such as well. Just heartbreaking, you know, when 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 you see someone you know losing losing a, a kid that's just out of the natural order of life, isn't it? Um. So I did already pass on uh, my sincere condolences to to Helen already and offered up if there's anything Narsa could do, and and that was gratefully received. But yeah, sincere condolences to. The family and friends of Evelyn, just awful, awful news. And then we also had uh, the Rangers announce that uh, the, the tiny Gallagher had, had passed away as well. And I'm just going to read this part out. It was quite a poignant message on the Rangers website. And it says, Rangers Football Club is saddened to hear of the passing of much-loved Mary Tiny Gallagher. Tiny, who served the club for over 50 years, 50 years, it's incredible, uh, was a treasured friend to generations of players and staff. Mary followed in her mother Lizzie Love and her grandmother Maggie Lindsay's footsteps when she joined the club in 1967. Her family ties didn't end with her sister, I didn't end there with her sister Irene working alongside her in the catering department. Her husband John worked in hospitality at the stadium and her dad Willie and Uncle Davy also being part of the Rangers family. Several members of her own family are also still working at the club to carry on the legacy. In 2001, Tiny was invited to Monte Carlo to receive a special UEFA award on behalf of her loyal service to the club. She was presented with the John, Gray, John Gregg Achievement Award in 2014 and spent her final years at Rangers as a tour guide, delighting visitors of the history of our, delighting visitors of the history of the club with a few special personal stories too. Tiny was given a guard of honour from the players in April 2019 to mark her retirement and watched the Stephen Gerrard side produced a 3-0 win over Hearts at Ibrox. A lovely, a lovely tribute there. And again on the, the Rangers social media channels, um, this was very, very prevalent as well. F over 15, that's just incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, this is another get well soon message. This one is is for my nephew Paul McLister and for regular listeners you might have remembered that I had wished him luck after his latest uh, knee surgery. He's been having a hell of a, hell of a time with his knees over the years and uh, this last one was supposed to have um, helped get it all clean up and, and cleaned out and get him back to fighting fitness and that's really not the way that it's worked out for the poor fella. He's had a hell of a time since that last surgery and had a bit of a wobble last week and had a bit of a, a medical episode that ended up putting him in hospital over over the weekend there and he just got out last night in time to go to his father-in-law's funeral today um, and sincere condolences uh, to Nicola and, and her family uh, on the passing of her of her dad like what what is going on in this world right now like this is unbelievably um unbelievable let's just leave it at that i guess but i hope you're going to feel better i hope you're going to be on the men soon paul and uh, you get back to as i say fighting fitness here pretty soon and we also uh, we also I, I, I had no idea um that, that he was even sick it just shows you how much attention i pay at times but um i wanted to pass on sincere condolences to um, the friends and family of Billy Emery, who was um, a member, a stalwart member of the Ibrox Exiles out in, in Hamilton, Ontario. I was just with my sister on the weekend and, and she had said that, uh, you know, Janine, uh, one of his daughters, had, had confirmed that 
um, he had passed away, and as I say, I had, I had no idea um, he was he was even ill. So I'm going to I'm going to read out um, a wee bit of his obituary here, if you don't mind. Um, he was born on November twenty third, nineteen fifty three, and then passed away um, on uh, October twenty eighth. So almost was so almost seventy, and you know he he didn't act like an a person of an older generation. Billy was an absolute laugh and a hoot every single time I was in his company. Such a such a fun guy. Then it says here, it's with profound sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved William George Emery Billy, not long before his 70th birthday. Billy was born and raised in Glasgow, Scotland and emigrated to Canada in the late 1970s. He held many titles in life from Millwright to football player or coach to friend, but most importantly, he was... It was the title of father. Billy was a passionate member of Battlefield Lodge No. 61 and Ibrox Exiles RSC in Hamilton. He will forever be remembered for his infectious infectious laughter, jokes and great banter. I 100% concur with that. He was loved by many, especially his daughters, his grandchildren and his sisters. He will be greatly missed by everyone who knew him. We love you and we miss you already. And then it goes on to say here, the family would love you to come and honour his life at Bayview Gardens Funeral Home, 947 Rymo Road, East Hamilton, Ontario, if you happen to be in the area. Visitation will be held on Wednesday, November the 1st from 5pm to 9pm and the funeral service will be held on Thursday, November the 2nd at 3pm with a reception to follow at Binbrook Grill, which is on 320 Binbrook Road in Binbrook, Ontario from 4.30pm onwards. A great guy and uh, another bear gone too soon from the family. And uh, I just want to pass on sincere condolences um, about that. Billy was really one of the good guys. That's the sad stuff for this week. Now, here's another wee thing. For regular listeners, you'll know I've been saying for a wee while I've got a bit of a change in career coming up, which hopefully will give me a wee bit more time to dedicate to Narsa stuff and really get back on track. And tomorrow on Halloween is my last official day as a full-time project manager. I'm going to call my career as a project manager done. I'll say that somewhat reserved just in case I have to actually pick up the tools again and go back to it. I wouldn't be devastated if that happened either by the way but I think it's time after almost 30 years to, to give that one a wee bit of a, a breather and go and I've already got my, my own coaching business set up for leadership coaching and uh, and self-education uh, work that, I, that I'm going to be trying to do as well. So tomorrow's my last full day. I'm going to be a bit of a wimp and I'm not actually going to go into the office. I'm going to just try and tidy up as much as I possibly can remotely and then slope away a little bit sleek it style there. But yeah, so from this next pod for next week onwards there will be a new version of me and uh, hopefully something that's a wee bit more organized and a wee bit less tired than doing something i love rather than just something i like as well so wish me luck folks and uh, if you have anybody who's any in any need of any leadership coaching or life coaching or anything like that please do think of me uh, on the convention update nothing to report i did think last week that we were going to get the second proposal from the Omni uh, resort but that didn't actually materialise so we, we just have the one for right now as I'd mentioned last week we went through a cursory look at the first one and we'll get an opportunity to to have a wee bit more of a deep dive into that once we get the second one and then we have you know one to compare with one and then we'll get ourselves um, organised on that so nothing too material um, to report on that one. On to communications from this past week from the Gels Guide which they are getting very good at posting on a Monday now which is great. Tomorrow we have the press conference for the Dundee game and Wednesday we have the Dundee game in, in and of itself. Nothing uh, too much to report for Thursday. On Friday it's the press conference for the, the League Cup semi-final with Hearts and then that, the game of course is on Sunday and we also have a women's Premier League game as well where Rangers take on Spartans at Broadwood Stadium at 2 o'clock on Sunday as well. So hopefully wins for both the men's and the women's teams there. And I, I know I keep mentioning this but we do have two tickets for the Heart and Hand live show at Emerson House on Friday. I'm going to chat, I, I did actually open up a bit of dialogue with the communications folks last week to say we should probably get together and work on a little bit of a communication strategy. I do have to get back to them with some times on that, so I'll definitely do that this week uh, once I get beyond my day job here and get ourselves organised to get that competition 
out there and then then we'll see what happens and the almost last thing that I wanted to, to talk about this week was just I thought it was quite interesting Rangers uh, putting out the the article or the statement sorry that they did last week um, talking about the, the game the Motherwell game being moved to Christmas Eve and I'm just going to read it out here if you don't mind Rangers are disappointed to have learned today this was published on Friday to have learned today our fixture with Motherwell originally scheduled for December 23rd has been moved to Christmas Eve December 24th the club fully appreciates the lens of supporters travel for these matches and the sacrifices that are made in order to back their team at every opportunity Sky Sports movement of the match to Christmas Eve a day where many supporters will have other plans and also where public transport is limited feels unnecessary given the potential broadcast slots available to them on the Saturday the club also learned of this fixture change only an hour prior to its external announcement, which allowed no time for any dialogue or debate with either Sky Sports or the SPFL. Earlier this season, the club asked for a fixture with St Murn on Sunday, October the 8th, uh, to to kick off later than 12 noon to give the team, uh, sorry, given the team flew over five hours back from Cyprus on the Friday evening to allow for more preparation and recovery time, this request was denied. Sky Sports are a valued league partner and as a club, we enjoy a strong working relationship with them. The decision, however, is extremely poor and shows a lack of regard to our supporters. The same can be said, of course, for the for the Motherwell supporters. I know that, that there's, there's some changes and and this is happening down south in, in England as well. So it's not just us, but good for the club for coming out and calling that out and also calling out the process, you know, not really being uh, adhered to. Typically, we, in my experience with RTV, um, we, we work on roughly a, a six week cycle, you know, within about six weeks, four to six weeks for sure. You get to know what the schedule is. So, I mean, this is well out with the six week cycle, you know, I mean, this is, this is um, what, seven or eight weeks away almost. Um, I guess it'd probably be about seven um, weeks, uh, but probably eight actually when it was announced. You know, so a wee bit further in in advance, but Christmas Eve is that's a that's a t- that's a tough one for for folks. You know that I've got kids especially or that, that take Christmas very seriously uh, to do that sort of thing. So so good on the club for for highlighting. You know the decision in and of itself is not one that's appreciated, and then the actual process followed to to make the decision and communicate the decision doesn't look like it was there was any sort of protocol followed other than just a very late courteous. Um, uh, are not so not so courteous, I guess. Really, um, you know, heads up as well. So, kind of dumb uh, from the SPFL and, and and from Sky as well. But whatever Sky says goes. Is, that's the way it goes. So I guess there's not much we can do about it. And the last thing I wanted to finish up on for for this week um, was the I talked last week about the the the, the scumbag or scumbags that had, that had defaced things with some um, vile wording about Her Majesty. Um, Queen Elizabeth and the Ibrox disaster and such and apparently they found the person I'm kind of surprised there's only one to be honest but um, and and he has been banned from for life from Hibs but for some reason it didn't from from the information I read it didn't seem to be that he was getting reported to the police I thought this was a hate crime I thought there was I thought you weren't allowed to do stuff like that um, these days but he just gets a what's a slap on the wrist and told not to come back he'll just grow a goatee beard and put a baseball cap on and go back to the games anyway, I'm fairly sure, you know, or make it, I don't know, scumbag is is probably too good a term for that particular fellow, but good to see it in some way that it was dealt with relatively swiftly and, uh, and we can move on and hopefully get better for the experience as we go forward. Okay, dokie folks, I'm, I'm sorry that things were a wee bit heavy in the, in the middle of, of the pod. It just seems to be a sign of the times uh, for right now with um, uh, some tragic passings and, and some people experiencing some, some health issues. But it's always good to, to give them a shout out and let them know that we're thinking about them and that, um, that they're always in our thoughts and our prayers as well. But that will do it for this week, my friends. As always, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you very, very, very much for um, taking the time to listen. And please do pass it on to whomever you think might enjoy it until next week let's build on the luck that we earned on thursday and sunday and take that into another massive week for us here and get ourselves into the final of the league cup and continue a resurgence in the league as well that's not too much to ask is it until next week my folks please do take care of yourself and all the very best okay cheerio now